morning, Clay Chalkville. This is Julia Petty and Elise Quinn with our third episode of Keeping Up with Clay Chalkville for the 2019-2020 school year. In this episode, we highlight two of our CCHS students, update you on new movies and music, and teach you how to make some cute Thanksgiving cupcakes. First up, we have a cooking tutorial on how to make Thanksgiving-themed cupcakes. Hey y'all, it's Chloe and Elizabeth with Cooking with Chloe and Elizabeth. To kick off the Thanksgiving spirit, we'll be making turkey-inspired cupcakes. Now let's get started. To get started, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Next, add one cup of water, two thirds cup of vegetable oil, and three eggs to the cake mix. Mix with a mixer on medium speed or beat vigorously by hand for two minutes. After pouring the mixture into your cupcake tins, bake for 14 to 19 minutes. After the cupcakes are baked, let cool for about 10 minutes. While the cupcakes are cooling, get your icing, nutter butters, eyeballs, twizzlers, and candy corn ready to be put on the cupcakes. After the cupcakes are cooled off, spread the icing over the top of each one. When the icing is ready, stick a nutter butter in the middle of the cupcake. It might help to cut out some of the middle of the cupcake. Once the nutter butter is placed in the middle, add candy corn behind it to make it look like feathers. Once you are done with that, add the candy eyeballs and a small piece of a Twizzler to make the snoods, aka the gobbler. After you are done with that, your cupcakes are ready to be eaten and or admired. I hope you enjoyed our second episode of Cooking with Chloe and Elizabeth. Thanksgiving is such a lovable holiday spent with family and friends. We hope our turkey and fried cupcakes inspire you to make something as special. Now we're going to showcase a nonprofit organization from our community called Meals on Wheels. During the holiday season, most people tend to be more generous towards others. But United Way is an organization that gives back to the community all year long. They have 16 nonprofits to benefit those in need, one of which is Meals on Wheels, which delivers to 2.4 million seniors across America. I spoke with Becky Wright, the director of Meals on Wheels, to find out what they're all about. She informed me that Meals on Wheels delivers food to people who can't get it themselves or are disabled, most of which are senior citizens who can't go out alone or have financial need. The organization originated right here in our area with five homebound customers in the 70s, and now they are serving 1,200 seniors. United Way raises almost $36.5 million per year to support all of their nonprofits. This allows them to give away hot meals for free or almost free to those in need. Without donations, Meals on Wheels can't serve everyone that needs it and the seniors will go hungry. 59% of their customers live alone and their volunteers are often the only people these elders see all day. These volunteers do more than just deliver food though. They also check in with the customers and create a relationship with them to prevent them from becoming socially isolated. They are currently short on volunteers who are crucial to the organization. If they had to pay someone to deliver the food, it would double the cost of the meal for the recipients. If you would like to help out, you can donate or sign up to volunteer by visiting their website. You could also help in a small way by checking on your own neighbors to make sure that their basic needs are met. All it takes is one small act to brighten someone's day. Now we're going to hand it over to Gage with some tips on how to shop on Black Friday. Hey Quick Chalk, this is Gage Shorten with a special segment called Ballin' on a Budget. Today we're highlighting the top stores for holiday deals. Let's hand it over to Bryant and Darius for more. I'm Bryant Spivey. And I'm Darius Bordeaux. Everyone knows that people our age don't want another pair of socks for Christmas. What we really want are new electronics. So we came up with a list of three stores in their top three deals on electronics for Black Friday. The first place will be Best Buy. They'll be having great deals such as MacBook Airs over $200 off select models, 55 inch screen LG flat screen TVs for $299.99, 7 u over $100, and an Xbox One S for only $149.99, which is half off. The second one will be Target. They have more of a variety of things on sale such as Beat Solo 3 Wireless for $129.99, saving you $170. Xbox and PS4 controllers for $39.99 when they are usually $59.99. And then the Amazon Echo 3rd Gen for $59.99, saving you $40. Finally is Walmart. They'll be having a Series 3 Apple Watch for $129.99, saving $70. AirPods for $129.99, saving $70. And finally the 7th Gen iPad Pro for $249.99, saving $150. 
Thank you for joining us. Hope these deals gave you some inspiration for your holiday gift giving. Have a great and safe holidays. Next up is a feature story on our football videographer, Darius Bordeaux. When you think of football, you might think of sweaty players, screaming coaches, and sprightly fans. You often don't think of the people behind the scenes. When talking about high school football, those people behind the scenes are often students themselves. Hi, my name is Darius Bordeaux. I'm a senior and I film for the Clay Chaffle football team. It all started my sophomore year. I was in band my freshman year, and I could remember 10th grade year, I joined my school broadcast program. So the football, the head football coach came and asked the broadcast program, did we have anybody that would be interested in filming for the team? And me, I just wanted to try something new, so I volunteered myself, and I actually found out that that's something I really enjoy doing. Um, to me, I feel like it benefits the football player for me doing what I do for the team is they have film to look at and I film at practices so it, it helps them get better as a whole, as an individual and as a, like, as a team because they, they can see their mistakes and know what they need to actually work on before they prepare for the game. We started using the drones beginning of last year's season. Um, it was something Coach Gilmer just decided to try like a new shot. Basically when a camera cannot get everything, but when you have a drone on the field, it gets a whole view of the field, the linemen, the way they line up, see where players are lined up, are they lined up correctly. So it just, it just helped minimize mistakes in games. Um, I wouldn't say the football players know how much, I mean, they do know like if it wasn't a film, they wouldn't know what to work on besides like basically going out there, going through that drill. So I do feel like I impact them as a team in some type of way because they they know they're gonna look at film and study. If if I'm not here, they don't have anything to study or anything to look at. I would say the most favorite moment of this year that I filmed was the James Clemens game. It was a very close game, and I could remember when we got the interception to win the game, I jumped up and down, and everybody was asking me, like, talking about I was going to jump off the roof, but I was just so excited that we actually won the game. The coaches, they praise me a lot and thank me for what I do, but it's something, like, I enjoy to do, like, a job. It's like, I'm happy. I look forward to doing this every day. We got to sit down with Clay Truffle's head coach, Drew Gilmer, and ask him about the continuation of Darius's legacy. We have no clue. Uh, no, uh, seriously, Darius does a great job. He's going to be uh, he's going to be hard to replace, and uh, so uh, ho hopefully we can find find some younger guys that uh, maybe Darius can uh, teach and, and kind of show them the ropes. You know what what Darius does is as important as any role on the football team, from from players to coaches to anyone. Uh, you know, with, without him, we we couldn't do what we do. Is this something I plan on doing in the future? Yes, um, I would like to continue working with cameras and working with people, filming cameras is just something I love to do. That's the play! <laughs> Next up, we have a recap of all sports that happened in the month of November. November is an important month for Clay Chalfa sports. Many of our sports are ending, while some are just getting started. To kick off the month of November, our football team played Gaston City in our last regular season game. We ended up taking the victory with the final score of 31 and 21. The next week was finally the time to kick off the playoffs. In the first round of the playoffs, our Cougars competed against a 9-1 Helena team, coming off a six-game win streak. During the game, nobody from either side scored until the third quarter. 
The final score ended up being 17-0, with our football team taking the victory and advancing to the second round of the playoffs. After this, our football team advanced to play Athens at home. Our defense only allowed Athens to score once, ending with the final score of 35-7. In the past two games, Damian Ward has scored five total touchdowns, and Lazarius Hinkle scored a total of two. Meanwhile, another sport has started their season earlier this November. Our Cougar basketball teams have played four games, including the season opener against Chelsea. Our boys varsity were able to come up from a slow start to come out with the victory, featuring a score of 58 to 40. Both of the boys teams also ended up taking a win later that week against Mortimer Jordan. The varsity ended with a score of 56 to 40, and the JV ended with a score of 50 to 38. On the other hand, our Lady Cougars have been struggling a tad bit starting the season off 0-3. Last weekend, our Lady Cougars traveled to Mortimer Jordan to play against West Point High School. Even though they were defeated with the score of 61 to 64, they fought hard after halftime coming back after being down 29 to 42. Tamai Muse had 18 points, Akifa Tellis had 14 points, and Kaylee Johnson had 11 points. As you can see, many things have been going on throughout our sports community of Clay Chalk. Our teams have been very successful and plan on continuing to do these things throughout the year. Now for a video about the history of Thanksgiving. God, we just thank you for this day. God, we thankful for everything that you've done and everything that you've yet to do for us. Um, we just thankful for family, friends, and everyone that is yet to come in our lives. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. 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 Hey, guys. What's the history of Thanksgiving? Hey, it's Simone. Today I'm going to be covering the history of Thanksgiving. The first Thanksgiving was held in the autumn of 1621 in Plymouth, Massachusetts. It was attended by pilgrims who were passengers on the Mayflower, who were also the first Puritans to settle in North America during the Great Puritan Migration in the 17th century. The pilgrims came together with the Wampanoag, a group of Indians to make peace with each other. Thanksgiving did not become a national holiday until 200 years later, thanks to President Abraham Lincoln, but it did not take effect until 1941. The first Thanksgiving consisted of roasted ducks, shelled chestnuts, flint corn, and squash. Sorry guys, there wasn't any turkey. Thanksgiving teaches us to be thankful for what we have, and it's also one way families can come together to spend time with one another. Well, there you have it folks. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Thanks, Simone, and now we know the true meaning of Thanksgiving. November is a big month for college football, so we went around and asked Clay Chalkful what they know about college football. Hey, Clay Chalkful. As we all know, college football season is coming to an end, which means the biggest game of the state, the Iron Bowl. So we grabbed some students and teachers to answer these college football questions. I'm here with Jalen Williams. Trenaya, uh Hutcherson. Alec. How many points is a safety? Two. Four. <laughs> Two. How many points is a touchdown? Six. Seven. Six. I'm here with Mooney. Don. Isaiah. <laughs> Jalen. What's the name of Auburn's Eagle? Peppa Pig. <laughs> Hulk. I don't know Jack. I'm here with Miss Petty. Miss Whitley. And what do y'all do at the school? I am the librarian. I don't know. You don't you don't do anything? No, I don't do anything. Boy, if you don't How many people are on the field at once? Eleven. Twenty two plus two reps. Who has the longest streak of consecutive wins in the Iron Bowl? Alabama. That's Alabama. Okay. How many points is a field goal? Three. Three. What is the name of Alabama's mascot? Big Al. Oh, of course, Big Al. We're with? Uh, Mr. Hickman. Where does the term Iron Bowl come from? Uh, I'm assuming it comes from, like, a lot of the games were played in Birmingham, and you had the whole iron industry in Birmingham, and then the game was really tough, and, like, you know. What's the name of Arvin's Eagle? Uh, what do you mean? There's different ones. The one now. Spirit. Nova. We have more than one. For real? Yeah. 
Whether you're an Alabama or Auburn fan, we hope you have a great time watching the Iron Bowl. This was Will Heron with our segment on college football. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Next is a video on all of the fine arts at our school and the impact they have on our students. Here at Clay Chocolate High School, we have a wonderfully talented fine arts department. Too often their hard work goes unnoticed and underappreciated. Today we would like to highlight their hard work and dedication. I enjoy theater because it's a way to um, be social and it's a way to express myself whether it's I want to be super dramatic or super comedic, it's a really good way to kind of let loose and come out of my shell a little bit more. My favorite show is definitely Les Miserables because of the drama and the singing. It's absolutely fantastic. The show we will be doing in January is Clue on Stage, which is based off of the board game Clue. So it's a murder mystery show. So super, super fun and super, super funny. And then we are planning on doing Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory for our spring musical. Um, if you've ever been interested in getting on stage and trying something new, theater is a great way to explore that. And it's a great way to get involved with your peers and um, just have a little bit of fun, so come and join us. I have been teaching art for, this is my fifth year now. Uh, my favorite type of art um, is, is painting because that's my favorite type of art to make, um, but I'm really into street art, which can incorporate graffiti, land art, different type of installations, um, contemporary art, um, which is most, like a lot of the new current things that are coming out, but I really kind of love it all. What I enjoy most about art is the ability to really just express yourself as a human um, and to allow creativity to flow. For me, it really kind of puts me in this happy place where I'm not having to think so much and kind of be carefree in some of my choices. Um, and I love seeing different sides of people come out when they are making art. We have lots of art competitions coming up, so if you are interested in that, um, something to kind of put your art out there, um, or just to get extra experience, um, please come by and see me. We'd love to um, plug you in for different competitions. What I love most about teaching um, are seeing students that may not essentially like art to begin with, learn to love it, um, and to see that process come out to where they start off with an idea and they problem solve and they use their critical thinking uh, skills to evolve and to change their, um, their art making into something. And it's not always about the end product, you know, creating something beautiful, but more so um, having something that they're really proud of. Fine arts are an integral part of our school's curriculum. And I hope that we've inspired you to join one of these programs. If you are interested in joining, please talk to any of the teachers that we featured in this video. Now we're going to hand it over to Zach with a preview on the CCHS basketball season. As the temperature starts getting colder and the football season is coming to an end, it is time to get ready for Clay Chalkville basketball. Both the boys and girls teams are excited for this season to get underway. We have a, a locker room full of just unbelievable kids. I think it matters to them uh, to represent Clay Chalkville in, in, in a way, both on and off the floor, um, that, that people will be proud of. And, and so really just, just excited about being around them. We have a great group of seniors. We have six seniors, seven seniors that um, just are special and put a lot of time in. And so to be their head coach for their last season here means a lot to me. Our Cougars have been working hard since last year to improve and get ready for this season and to complete their goal of making it to Jacksonville State. You know, I would say our goal uh, is to make it to Jacksonville. You know, uh, obviously Jacksonville is, is our regional tournament. Uh, it's been what we've talked about all summer long during our, our workouts. We really worked hard this summer on shooting. You know, uh, uh, we were given a, a shooting gun, which is a shooting machine uh, from Mr. Lee and our administration here. And, and it allowed us to really uh, put a, little, a lot of time in the gym just shooting the basketball. Um, so, so, you know, we've really worked on our overall skill set, but probably what we spent the most time on is uh, shooting the basketball and making shots. We're all looking forward to this basketball season and seeing what these amazing teams will do. Uh, we just hope that we can start strong and finish strong. Lastly, we have a feature story on CCHS student Chauncey Knott. Hi, my name is Chauncey Knott. I'm in the 11th grade, and I'm going to tell you how I manage two jobs and go to school. So I work at Milo's in spare time. I work Milo's Monday through Thursday. I work spare time Friday through Sunday. I really don't get off days because I like money. At Milo's, I usually work seven hours a night because I close. I work fries, meat cook, garnisher, and sometimes register. Uh, at spare time, I work usually like three parties a day. I make sure the families are okay. I make sure the kids have the best time of their life. I play laser tag with the kids. I make balloon animals. 
Yeah, I blow up balloons. We bring out pizza. I've worked at Milo's for six months. Then I've worked at Spare Time for about two and a half months so far. How do I manage my time? I try to get homework out throughout the day. Like, second period is my hardest class. That's history with Mr. Campbell. I usually try to get that done in class to third period. And third period, I try to do my math homework as well. I don't really get sleep at all. Um, the advice I would give for someone trying to work two jobs is, number one, have a car. And number two, make sure your schoolwork is down packed. Because you don't want to work two jobs and then your grades start to fail. So like, try to split your two jobs up between the week or work doubles on the weekend, which is double the money. Has it been stressful? Uh, yes and no. I get no off days during the week. But at the end of the two weeks, it's, it's pretty good. Just get you a kickstart or a monster. Some water to wash it down. This is Chauncey Nani. You just tuned in to CCHS TV. Since Thanksgiving is coming up, we went around and asked CCHS what they were thankful for. You all know Thanksgiving is right around the corner, so we are going to be asking some people what they are thankful for this season. So, tell us your name and what you are most thankful for. My name is Nora Blaylock, and I'm most thankful for my friends and family, and that's about it. Mm. Impactful. Now, tell us your name, Miss. Kelsey Henderson. I'm most thankful for my family, my friends, and my teachers. Shout out to you. Absolutely. My name is Autumn Bryant, and I'm very thankful for my friends and my family and the dance team. My name is Anaya Reese, and I'm thankful for uh, chicken and my friends Ooh. and memes. Yummy. Yum E. Tell us your name. My name is Tiffany, and I'm thankful for my family, friends, and teachers. Show enough. My name is Shanara, and I'm most thankful for everybody that plays a role in my life. Yes, thank you very much. What's your name, sir? Um, my name's Avery, and I'm thankful that I can sing. <laughs> that was wonderful, Avery. Wonderful. What are you thankful for? Uh, guys, I am thankful for y'all. <laughs> Remember guys, this is the season of gratitude, so remember to show the ones you love just how thankful you are for them. Up next, we have What's Poppin', where we update you on all the new movies and music. Hey girl, what's poppin'? What's poppin', Clay Chalkville? This is Cameron Gaines. And Emily Fitzhugh. With CCN TV. Welcome to our first segment of What's Poppin'. In this segment, we'll talk about what's poppin' in the industry. We'll highlight some upcoming movies and music. Well, let's not waste your time. Movies that came out this month are Harriet, Charlie's Angels, Frozen 2, Dr. Sleep, Last Christmas, also Queen and Slim, Ford vs. Ferrari, 21 Bridges, and Dark Waters. Now you know we just couldn't stop at movies, so here's some new albums that came out this month. There was the deluxe Christmas album by Mariah Carey, Survival by Dave East, Two Sides by Jason Derulo, Believers Never Die by Fall Out Boy. Then Ocean by Lady Antebellum, Everyday Life by Coldplay, she is Miley Cyrus by Miley Cyrus, and Chicks Tape 5 by Tory Lanez. All of these have dropped, so don't be afraid to go get it, or even see one of the movies we mentioned. Well, catch us in the December episode. This is Emily Fitzhugh. And Cameron Gaines. With CCN TV. Thank you for watching our third episode of Keeping Up with Clay Chalkful. Tune in next month for our Christmas episode.